first time. <laughs> I heard it was <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are standing, if you'd make your way to your seats, please, we'll be starting shortly. Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you to Port Wainimi, California for the commissioning ceremony for USS Santa Barbara. I am Commander Paul Richardson, the ship's executive officer. On behalf of the crew of the USS Santa Barbara, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for joining us here today. Before our celebration begins, please silence your cell phones. Thank you. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of the USS Santa Barbara, the third United States ship to bear the name Santa Barbara. The first USS Santa Barbara, ID 4522, was a steel freighter built in 1916, which served from 1918 until 1919. She was sold to the American Hawaiian Company in 1925 and renamed SS American. She was sunk off the coast of Honduras by German submarine U-504 in June of 1942. The second USS Santa Barbara, AE-28, was a Kilauea-class ammunition ship. Santa Barbara was laid down on December 30, 1966 at the Bethlehem Sparrows Point Shipyard in Sparrows Point, Maryland, and commissioned July 11, 1970. She was awarded the Meritorious Unit Commendation in 1973 for numerous records set replenishing at sea during the Vietnam War, earning one campaign star, and again in 1988 for her performance during the Mediterranean Sea deployment. She completed numerous Western Pacific, Caribbean, and Mediterranean Sea deployments. She was decommissioned in 1998 and redesignated TAE-28, continuing service to Military Sealift Command until 2005. Another U.S. Navy vessel bore the name Santa Barbara, launch number 164, served at the Washington Navy Yard and the Proving Grounds at Indian Head, Maryland during World War I, though not ever a commissioned ship. This ship and her crew are honored to bear the name USS Santa Barbara and to continue the proud legacy of courage handed to us by those who have gone before us on the previous USS Santa Barbara's. We are honored to have Captain Charlie Plum, United States Navy retired, Vietnam veteran, former prisoner of war with us here today. We're also pleased to have prior USS Santa Barbara service members with us today and would like to recognize them and those joining us remotely. Would all veterans and active duty service members please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service. You may be seated. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transition from silent hull to a fully alive warship. My shipmates, our crew, who are hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation and ready. In just a few moments, Navy Band will render honors to the Honorable Julia Brownlee. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, our national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Lieutenant Marie Tracy, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, our ceremony's chaplain. Mr. Kevin McTague, Chairman, USS Santa Barbara Commissioning Committee. Captain Richard Sloan, United States Navy retired, former commanding officer, USS Santa Barbara, AE-28, our long glass presenter. <laughs> Ms. Jennifer Alexis Han, matron of honor. <laughs> Mr. Howard Burkoff, deputy program manager, littoral combat ships. Captain Mark Crawford, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1. Applause 
Captain Nathan Schneider, United States Navy, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. Mr. Larry Ryder, Vice President, also USA. Rear Admiral Casey Moten, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Unmanned and Small Combatants. The Honorable Randy Rouse, Mayor, City of Santa Barbara, California. The Honorable Russell Rumbaugh, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Financial Management and Comptroller. Admiral Samuel Paparo, United States Navy, Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Ms. Lolita Zinke, escorted by Senior Chief Petty Officer Rosa Thibodeau, Santa Barbara's Command Senior Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Julia Brownlee, United States Representative, 26th District, State of California, escorted today by Commander Brian Sparks, Santa Barbara's commanding officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Julia Brownlee. Hand salute. Platform ready to advance the colors. Retire the colors.
We would like to thank the United States Navy Band Southwest and Naval Base Ventura County Color Guard for their participation in our ceremony today. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Tracy will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal God, we gather today and ask your blessings on the commissioning of the USS Santa Barbara. For as long as humanity has gone to sea in ships, we have felt the awesome urging toward mystery, which takes us from those we love and to whom we long to return. This magnificent ship brings together a dedication to sail the unobstructed seas with the legacy of its namesake, Santa Barbara. From the history held in the land of the Shumash people to a city named after St. Barbara, the patron saint of armors and miners, to the Kailua class ammunition ship by the same name. We thank you for the spirit of strength that nurtures this community. As the USS Santa Barbara is commissioned and brought to life, we pray that this same strength of spirit will rest upon this ship and her crew. May those who have contributed to her planning and construction, along with their sponsor, Mrs. Lolita Zinke, and the city commemorated in her name, be honored by this warship's outstanding service. May those who sail her devote themselves to the fullest accomplishment of every responsibility with pride for their crew, the Santa Barbara community, and the United States Navy. Holy God, on this day, the 130th birthday of the Navy's chief petty officers, we would be remiss if we didn't thank you for our chief's mess. We ask you to bless the chiefs both aboard the USS Santa Barbara and across our fleet as they keep our Navy running with wisdom expertise, and tenacity. We celebrate this glorious day with deep gratitude. We ask blessings upon those present for today's ceremony, for the crew, and for Commander Brian Sparks as he takes command of the USS Santa Barbara. May the traditions held in this ceremony tie us to our greater naval heritage. And may we remember to ground ourselves in you, whose perfect love is our peace, and whose peace is our power. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Tracy. Will the guests please be seated? Santa Barbara, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Julia Brownlee. Good morning, and what a glorious morning it is. As the representative of California's 26th Congressional District, which encompasses most of Ventura County and proudly boasts as the home of the renowned naval infrastructure and operations that is Naval Base Ventura County, I have the greatest privilege and the great pleasure to welcome you to today's ceremony. As many of you may know, Ventura County has a long and rich military history. The spirit of military service is strong throughout the region, and it has been passed down through generations. Because of Naval Base Ventura County, home of the United States Naval Construction Battalion Center and the Pacific Seabees, and over 80 commands, our community and its men and women who have answered the call to duty have played an instrumental role in every U.S. military campaign since 1942. As the proud representative of this extraordinary naval base, the largest employer in Ventura County with over 22,000 active duty service members and civilians, I continue to work to support these American patriots who work so very hard every day to serve our great nation. For its strategic location and its diverse, robust, and highly trained personnel, Naval Base Ventura County is absolutely vital to our regional and national security. 
Naval Base Ventura County and its sailors has always stood ready to carry out the critical mission of the United States Navy, including protecting and defending the ideals of our democracy around the world. Today, the Naval Base plays an even greater role in our national defense as America continues to refocus its attention towards the Asia Pacific region and the pivot to the Pacific. That is why it is more than fitting that the commissioning of the USS Santa Barbara would take place at the epicenter of our region's robust military community. As we gather here today to celebrate in the commissioning of the USS Santa Barbara, we also express our sincere gratitude to all of those who have served in uniform. In Congress, I have made it my focus to support these men and women and ensure our armed forces have the resources they need to continue to be the greatest fighting force in the world. The majesty and might of the USS Santa Barbara is truly emblematic of the re resolute and remarkable valor, valor of our armed forces and our veterans. I am incredibly honored to see this mighty ship come to life and to witness the Navy's acceptance of the USS Santa Barbara into its impressive fleet. The USS Santa Barbara is certainly a fighting ship, both in looks and in spirit. May God bless the men and women who will navigate this ship through waters and times of war and peace. May God bless the men and women of all of our armed forces, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Representative Brownlee. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Ryder. Good morning. What a beautiful morning to have such a great ceremony. I want to thank the uh, commissioning committee and the crew of the Santa Barbara for letting Austell be a part of your special day. Thank you for that. Today I have the honor to represent not only the nearly 3,000 shipbuilders of Austell USA, but also our team of 850 suppliers located in 40 states that have helped build this ship. 110 of those suppliers are right here in California, and their, stuff, their parts and material will be sailing on board the Santa Barbara when she sails the oceans. Together, our shipbuilding team has built and delivered an incredible ship. We are excited to be part of the ceremony celebrating the USS Santa Barbara, joining her sister Independence Littoral Combat Ships in the fleet. Mrs. Zinke, Ms. Han, Representative Brownlee, Representative Gates, Representative Zinke, Admiral Paparo, Secretary Rumba, Mayor Rouse, Admiral Moten, and most importantly, Commander Sparks, the crew of the future Santa Barbara, and your family and guests. Santa Barbara is the 16th of 19 Independence variant littoral combat ships that will be built in our shipyard in Mobile, Alabama and delivered to the Navy. As the builder of this great Navy ship, we've had the privilege to be part of every milestone in the life of the USS Santa Barbara, starting when we started construction in October 2019. Though we face the unique challenge of a global pandemic, our shipbuilding team, including our suppliers and Navy teammates, was able to continue construction and deliver the USS Santa Barbara. We worked alongside our Navy teammates, Captain Gold, Captain Schneider, Howard Burkoff, and the entire PMS 501 team to perform the nation's mission essential business of building ships for the Navy. Like our nation's dedicated and patriotic shipbuilding industrial base, our determined workforce and suppliers went above and beyond to ensure the construction of this great ship continued. Two years after we started construction, in October 2001, we launched and christened the ship. Ms. Zinke joined us for both the keel laying and the christening. The dedication of our sponsor came through as she navigated the challenges of travel and the various COVID restrictions that were in place at the time to make those events special. Even though the ceremonies were impacted and we learned how to conduct socially distant ceremonies, which thank goodness we don't have to worry about today, we had a great christening weekend. Members of our Austell USA team are watching this ceremony with pride today. 
they are America's best shipbuilders. Our workforce is highly skilled, deeply patriotic. These skilled builders and their counterparts in shipyards located throughout the country are key to maintaining the shipbuilding industrial base that are vital to our nation. Commander Sparks, when you and your crew sail the world's oceans in the coming years, the officer USA team will be there to support you anytime, anywhere. You will see our team when you sail into San Diego, into Singapore, and everywhere in between. We look forward to seeing the USS Santa Barbara sail alongside our sister ships, assuring access, deterring aggression, and promoting our freedom. We've built you a great ship and are looking forward to following your successes as you and your crew sail the global commons, ensuring our nation is secure and knowing you're ready to go into harm's way when your nation calls. Fair winds and following seas to you and your crew. May God bless and watch over the USS Santa Barbara and all who sail on her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Casey Moten. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the commissioning of USS Santa Barbara, the 32nd littoral combat ship built for our Navy Surface Force. Captain Plum, Mrs. Zinke, Representatives Brownlee, Gates, and Zinke, Admiral Paparo, Secretary Rumbaugh, Mayor Rouse, Captain Schneider, Captain Crawford, and finally our commanding officer, uh, Commander Sparks. Thank you for your service and leadership. I also offer my sincere thanks to the commissioning committee that's just done a wonderful job, the crew of LCS 32, their families and friends, the staff of LCS Squadron 1, and all the supporting commands and offices whose dedicated commitment and effort has enabled this important day, the commissioning of a U.S. Navy warship. As we assemble this morning here in Port Wyneme in the great state of California to commission the Santa Barbara, just 40 miles south of the, ship, of the ship's namesake city, I think it's important to reflect upon LCS 32's historical legacy and the unique milestone that this ship will mark when it deploys. As you've already heard this morning, the first two USS Santa Barbara's had a distinguished career and gave honorable performance. The single screw steel freighter in 1916 and then later the second Santa Barbara, the Kilauea class ammunition ship. The ship you see before you today marks a new generation and our latest technology, including being the first US Navy warship to be built from the keel up to operate unmanned systems in three maritime domains, surface, undersea, and air. In particular, to execute one of the most challenging missions facing the Navy, that of finding and destroying sea mines. Santa Barbara and her sister ships signaled the beginning of an exciting new era of manned and unmanned teaming, what our Navy is calling a hybrid fleet. And that future is also happening here today at Naval Base Ventura County, which is the initial home port for testing and maturing the Navy's emerging unmanned maritime vehicle fleet. Now, besides our end objective today of strengthening your Navy with the addition of this great ship, to me, commissionings are really special because they bring together in one moment the effort of three teams that are the best of America. First, our incredible industry that built and supplied this ship. Next, the outstanding crew that you see today that will bring our ship to life. And finally, you, the patriotic representatives and citizens of the ship's namesake city. Together, the three of us are an unbeatable team. From across, from shipbuilding uh, suppliers from across the entire nation, as Larry said, 110 suppliers uh, come and bring their steel and their equipment to the shipyard. And the shipyard brings that ship to life with miles of cables, an immense amount of insulation, an extremely large amount of aluminum, a very complex process. Bringing a warship to life in construction is one of the most complex industrial endeavors that we take. The men and women of Austell, along with our Navy supervisors of shipbuilding, have done a tremendous job, from the electricians to the welders, to the insulators, to those who bring the combat systems to life. The shipyard is truly an amazing activity 
and they should be very proud of what they've done today. The second leg of our unbeatable triangle is the crew. Like the parts that make this ship, the crew comes from all over the nation. They are the best of us, the best of us in America, and they will do an incredible job with their ship. And then the third, with the ship honoring Santa Barbara, you again, our team, make us unbeatable. Industries, sailors, and citizens. So thank you. Thank you. God bless the USS Santa Barbara, her crew, and their families. Thank you, Admiral Moten. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Randy Rouse. Good morning. What a great honor to represent the city of Santa Barbara in this historic event. And how cool is it we're getting our own boat? This is really good stuff. <laughs> I'd first like to acknowledge and thank the Navy leadership, the commissioning committee, and the Navy League. Thanks to all of you to hear here today for spending your Saturday morning to join us in celebrating this, this fine moment of history. The city of Santa Barbara is generally known for its outstanding beauty and setting, including our mountains, ocean, and offshore islands. But beneath that glorious veneer is a population that, over time, has shown resilience and determination in the face of natural disasters. Wildfires, debris flows, some recently experienced, predate the founding of our city, and the earthquake of 1925 largely flattened the city that we had at that time. Now, that's not exactly a passage out of the Old Testament, but it did, it did affect our architecture forever. We also shared that once-in-a-generation experience of the pandemic, which particularly hit Santa Barbara because we are primarily a hospitality industry. In 1942, a Japanese submarine gave us the dubious honor of being the site of the first naval bombardment of the United States mainland since the War of 1812. And while that attack was largely ineffective, it was the wake-up call for a sleepy beach town that when the war was for real and the blackouts would become a regular part of our lives. Throughout all these events, the Santa Barbara community performed admirably with the esprit de corps that is emblematic of how Americans respond to adversity and challenges. And that's why the USS Santa Barbara is an appropriate name for this literal combat ship. We are confident that our ship will be able and ready to respond to any threat in any venue to maintain the peace. Inscribed on the ship's coat of arms is the motto, resilient and determined. Perfect. And like its namesake city, she is more than just a pretty face. While the two previous ships that bore our, our city's name served well in support with, uh, with the first as a freighter and the second as an ammo ship, the ship we commissioned today represents the latest in technology for our country's defense. We remember that when the USS Santa Barbara begins her life as the newest member of the greatest Navy on the planet, she'll be manned by the courageous men and women uh, of honor who serve our country with the dig dignity, resilience, and determination. I'd like you to join me in a round of applause for the ship's company who are our newest and most welcome members are the sons and daughters of Santa Barbara. So to our ship's company. I'd now like to call Commander Brian Sparks to join me at the podium. Commander Sparks, it is my honor today to present you with this proclamation and hereby proclaim April 1st, 2023 as USS Santa Barbara Day in the city of Santa Barbara. May this proclamation serve as a reminder to you and the ship's company that from this day forward, every crew member of the USS Santa Barbara will be recognized and welcomed as honorary members of the Santa Barbara community. Commander Sparks. Thank you very much. God bless America. Thank you, Mayor Rouse. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Russell Rumba. Good morning, everyone. 
Secretary of the Navy Carlos Del Toro regrets that he can't attend personally, but it's an honor to represent him and the Department of the Navy as we commission the USS Santa Barbara into the world's greatest fleet. In my role as the Department of the Navy, I give thanks to the Santa Barbara Commissioning Committee uh, for making today a reality. It's your U.S. Navy to defend your nation. Tying ships to the communities across the country is key to building that connection. Congresswoman Brownlee, Mayor Rouse, thank you for officially representing the city that serves as a namesake for this warship. Our roles here emphasize that relationship. Ms. Hand, Ms. Zinke, thank you for your support to the ship and crew, which has fostered that connection to the city of Santa Barbara. That will endure for decades to come. That tie makes the ship great, makes the Navy great, makes the country great. The Secretary of the Navy has three enduring priorities. Strengthen maritime dominance, build a culture of warfighting excellence, and enhance strategic partnerships. Santa Barbara, as the Independence Variance littoral combat ship, joining a fleet of mission-tailored surface warfare combatants with mine warfare capabilities, will support allies and partners, deter adversaries through presence, and, as you can see here today, are manned by the most capable sailors who have ever served. That is, represents all three of the Secretary's priorities in the ship behind us. At our core, we are a maritime nation. The US, the U.S. Navy operates nearly 100 ships every day around the globe, three of them LCS, like the Santa Barbara. I've said a lot of thanks already, but now, thanks to the crew of the USS Santa Barbara. It is your service on this ship, sailing everywhere, international law allows, that maintains our maritime dominance. I also want to take those families of those whose sacrifice and support makes their service possible. I'm grateful to every member of the team that brought us here today. From the ship's crew, to our partners in industry, to Congress for their support, and most importantly, to you, the American people, represented particularly by the people of Santa Barbara today, that support the United States Navy. By fulfilling the Secretary's priorities, we serve you. And now, on behalf of the Secretary, it's my great pleasure to introduce Admiral Samuel Preparo, Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Great to be here in Port Juanini. Very humbled to be a part of this time-honored tradition today, to, to share in the rich heritage, the traditions, and the service of the Navy. But before we begin, I'd like to recommend, recognize uh, just a few uh, members here. Already having recognized veterans, sailors, soldiers, Marines, airmen, guardians, and Coast Guardsmen, I, on my bookshelf, have a treasured possession, which is an inscribed copy of I'm No Hero, written by one of my heroes, Captain Charlie Plum. I'll tell you plainly, I'm a Navy fighter pilot, and every Navy fighter pilot reveres the name of Charlie Plum whose excellence in combat and bravery and leadership as a prisoner of war stands as an exemplar to each and every one of you. To each and every one of you, I strongly recommend reading I'm No Hero by Captain Plum, and you will be inspired and strengthened for your journey no matter what it is. To the representatives from the great state of California and for the members of Congress who have graced us with our, with our presence today, thank you so much. Uh, to the members of the Navy League, and I was unprepared to march through so great a column of young sea cadets demonstrating clear-eyed, youthful patriotism. And ladies and gentlemen, when you see the sea cadets, yes, please, for the sea cadets. and the magnificent members of the crew, how can you not be hopeful or optimistic 
that our nation will ever prevail against the challenges that face us. I want to thank the commissioning committee. Uh, having been in the service for, uh, for a minute, uh, I'll tell you plainly, I have been uh, to many commissioning ceremonies and I've spoken at a few of them. But this, this commissioning committee, the work that they have done, uh, this commissioning here has been absolutely unsurpassed among the many I've, many I've had the honor to participate in. So for the commissioning committee, please, ladies and gentlemen. And happiest of all, and most of all, the captain and the crew of the soon to be commissioned USS Santa Barbara. It happens that April 1st is the birthday of the chief petty officer in the United States Navy. Those of you who have served in the Navy know that the chief petty officer is the backbone of leadership, the technical competence, the personal leadership that trains the junior officers and leads the crew in delivering combat power to the United States Navy today we celebrate 130 years of our revered Chief Petty Officers. For all Chief Petty Officers, past and present, if you'll please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Hoo Chiefs, thank you. Today's a historic day as we commissioned the third ship to bear the name, the name of the famous seaside city, Santa Barbara, whose innovative workforce and long-standing support from this community has strengthened the Navy and our nation. For over a century, our flag has flown on a naval ship bearing these names in three major conflicts since the First World War and in addition in support of relief to our friends and our partners in need. Today, the maritime domain is becoming more congested and more contested. It's our duty to uphold the core principles of the order alongside our allies and partners to ensure the future of the Indo-Pacific is one of freedom and openness, peace underpinned by values and deterrence underpinned by strength. This great ship will be home ported in San Diego where it will join the U.S. Pacific Fleet and the U.S. Indo-PACOM team. Littoral combat ships are versatile platforms, a successor in heritage to the escort fleets of the Second World War. It's a nimble street fighter, fast, agile, and mission-oriented to operate in nearshore and open ocean environments. Ideal for integration into joint combined manned and unmanned teams to support maritime security operations all around the globe. Our Navy, our nation needs this great ship and most of all, the sailors and Marines who serve on board. I might offer for all another reading suggestion having already suggested one. Uh, for all those interested in the heritage of nimble multi-purpose street fighter ships, it was a naval historian, the late Jim Hornfisher wrote, The Last Stand of the tin, tin Can Sailors. Give it a close read, please, on the USS Johnston and her legendary skipper, Commander Ernest Evans. With creativity, courage, and verve, USS Johnston uniquely effected victory in the Battle of Samar, in turn assuring Allied victory in the Battle of Leyte Gulf and indeed in the Second World War. A quick situation report to all on the indispensable mission impact of littoral combat ships across the Indo-Pacific right now. USS Charleston has just completed an exercise with six partner nations in the Bay of Bengal well, while USS Oakland is operating as I utter these words in the South China Sea. USS Mobile is taking part in US Navy and US Coast Guard Joint Patrol in the South Pacific under the Oceania Maritime Security is Initiative to reduce and eliminate illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing to combat transnational crime 
and to enhance regional security with embarked Coast Guard law enforcement detachment personnel. And later this summer, during Pacific Partnership 23, a littoral combat ship will be part of a multi-ship, multinational task group, a ready force that achieves peace through the strength of our unbreakable alliances and partnerships. These are just a few examples of how LCS is a platform of choice due to its fast and agile maneuvering capability. Soon, the ship's captain will give the order to move aboard the ship and bring her to life. And the officers, chiefs, and enlisted crew members will take to the rails, representing the future of our Navy and this magnificent crew hails from four corners of the world, from all of the continental United States, from Hawaii, from Fiji, Vietnam, Philippines, West Africa, Laos, Saudi Arabia, and includes uh, a sailor here uh, nearby from uh, Los Angeles. This represents the best hope of the world and the United States Navy are these young sailors. They are committed in their patriotism to build a greater country and to defend our security, our freedom, and our well-being. This crew represents the American spirit and it drives so many young people to join the Navy, to protect our families, to safeguard their fundamental freedom, and to ensure that all of us can live in peace. To the great city of Santa Barbara, you should be filled with pride by the young men and women who represent this beautiful, idyllic city. They've taken an oath to support and defend the Constitution and the country whose course it directs, our country. They've joined for patriotism, and in so doing, they have become better versions of themselves. We should all see ourselves in each magnificent sailor soon to man the rails. To the Gru, take this mighty warship to sea and remember the words of John Paul Jones, make her a fast ship, for I intend to take her to, into harm's way. USS Santa Barbara, welcome to the Pacific, the locus of America's future. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Admiral Paparo. Sir, I would be honored if you would place Santa Barbara into commission. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the President of the United States, and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place the United States ship Santa Barbara in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. Executive officer, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company, attention. The commission pennant in professional national navies began to take form in the late 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchant ship. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the main masthead to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's main mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Santa Barbara. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I 
I will now read my orders. From Commander Navy Personnel Command to Commander Brian Sparks, United States Navy. Subject, Buper's Order Number 2002 of 01 April 2022. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to future USS Santa Barbara as prospective commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Santa Barbara, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Paparo, USS Santa Barbara is in commission and I am in command. Very well. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Detail forward. Mark! Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safety and smooth operation of the ship. The long glass is the tr traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have Captain Richard Sloan, United States Navy retired, former commanding officer, USS Santa Barbara, AE-28. He will assist in setting the first watch by passing the long glass to our first ship's officer of the deck, electronics technician, first class, Kyle Smith from Crawfordsville, Indiana. The Petty Officer of the Watch is Myman Second Class Gunner McIntosh from Hanoverton, Ohio. The Messenger of the Watch is Myman Third Class Ali'i Noble from Houston, Texas. And the Bosun Mate of the Watch is Bosun Mate Second Class Zachary Livingston from Meridian, Idaho. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Detail forward, march. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Mrs. Lolita Zinke, with us today. Mrs. Zinke christened the ship in Mobile, Alabama on October 16th, 2021. Lola, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Thank you, Captain. Good morning, Santa Barbara. This is a great Navy day and an immense honor for the city that we all love so much. Welcome distinguished guests and fellow Santa Barbarans. Thank you so much for coming out today to celebrate the commissioning of our very own USS Santa Barbara and to show your support for her officers, crews, and families. I want to give thanks to the Santa Barbara Navy League and especially our commissioning committee who put so much work into all the events leading up to this week and most importantly, this historic day. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you. I would also like to recognize my ship's matron of honor, my daughter, Santa Barbara native, veteran Navy diver, dive medical technician, and Fleet Force qualified, Jennifer Hand. On my birthday in October of 2018, I received one of the greatest honors of my life 
When then Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Richard Spencer called me and asked if I would be the sponsor of the Navy's newest littoral combat ship. Of course, I said yes, and a big thank you. As you have heard earlier, the USS Santa Barbara is the third ship to bear the name of our fair city. Our ship, LCS-32, is the fastest and most technically advanced ship of the three, as unique and as beautiful as her namesake. Her ship's bell is modeled after our historic Santa Barbara mission bell. The ship's china, with its red stripe, symbolizes the blood spilled by our fallen heroes, Santa Barbara's military history, and our unique Spanish heritage, most easily recognized by our iconic red tile roofs. So here's the deal. Speaking from my heart to the officers, crew, and families of the USS Santa Barbara. As a military spouse of someone who was constantly deployed, I understand the heartbreak of saying goodbye far too many times. I understand the anxiety the spouse who stays at home feels when your child is sick and you have to make important medical decisions or deal with an emergency by yourself, sometimes in the middle of the night. I wholeheartedly understand the disappointment of missed birthdays, anniversaries, sporting events, and milestones in your children's lives. And I can understand the angst of not knowing where exactly your, your, your deployed spouse may be and what dangers they may be facing, and having to turn on the news to see where the hot spots are in the world. I can relate to the difficulties of a long-awaited reunion when your sailor finally comes home, but you have to readjust to living together again. It's tough, I know. And that's what you all are going through right now. But most importantly, I also understand that in my opinion, it's the most honorable calling a person can answer to. The ship's motto is resilient and determined, and I cannot think of two words that more aptly describe the USS Santa Barbara's crew and her families. When you retire or finish your enlistment, you cannot possibly anticipate the pride you will feel knowing that you and, the, you and your family were the ones who volunteered to serve our country, who stood up and swore a blood oath to defend our nation against all enemies, both foreign and domestic, when others did not. It's sometimes difficult to appreciate this when you are in the middle of it. I can tell you that from my perspective, when we, and I say we, because it's the service member and their family who serve, when we were active duty, it was the finest time of our life. So far, the USS Santa Barbara has been underway from Mobile, Alabama, where she was built, to Norfolk, Virginia, then across the Gulf of Mexico en route to traverse the Panama Canal, and then to her duty station in San Diego, California. And soon, her officers and crew will be called upon to do extraordinary duty in defense of our country. But today, in a few minutes, when we bring this beautiful ship to life, you shall embark on a rewarding new journey and continue the first chapter in this log, in this ship's log. Your honor, courage, and commitment make up the backbone of our great country. As a nation, we are forever grateful for your service. And as a city, we're immensely proud of you and your patriotism. And as sponsor, although I shall not be with you physically, my heart will follow you wherever you go. I promise you that I shall always be your champion and your friend, your ally and your advocate in whatever you need and however I can. I am so deeply honored and blessed 
to be part of the USS Santa Barbara family. Santa Barbara shall always welcome you home with open arms and an eagerness to hear your stories and revel in your triumphs. May God bless America, the United States Navy, and the USS Santa Barbara. And now, the orders we have all been waiting for for over four years. Officers and crew of the USS Santa Barbara, man our ship and bring her to life. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of the USS Santa Barbara salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. Ready? Two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Crawford, USS Santa Barbara is manned and ready, reporting for duty. Very well. Admiral Paparo, request permission to break your flag, sir. Permission granted, very well. Very well, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of Commander United States Pacific Fleet. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster. Break the flag of the Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet is flying proudly over USS Santa Barbara. Very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Brian Sparks, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, parade, rest. Good morning, families, friends, and supporters of USS Santa Barbara. On behalf of the crew of this warship, we are excited you could join us on a crisp, sunny day here on board Naval Base Ventura County, only a short drive from our ship's namesake. First, I'd like to thank Admiral Paparo, Representative Brownlee, Secretary Rumbaugh, Mayor Rouse, and the rest of our dignitaries here on the stage for honoring us with their presence and inspiring words this morning. I would also like to thank the Commissioning Committee especially Kevin and Crash and our ship sponsor, Ms. Lolita Zinke, for all you have done for the ship and the crew. Thank you all. I'm excited each of, the, of you could join us this morning, whether in person or online. In addition to the commissioning of USS Santa Barbara, as you heard earlier, April 1st holds special meaning in the U.S. Navy as the birthday of the Chief Petty Officer's Mess. To ensure that tradition remains alive and to honor our Chiefs, can I please have all members of the Chief's Mess, past and present, stand? I'm joined here by my Command Senior Chief, Rosa Thibodeau. Navy Chief! Navy Pride! Navy Chief! Navy Pride! Oh yeah, happy birthday, brothers and sisters. Happy 130th birthday, Chief Petty Officers. Despite being told to expect it, I was shocked to hear that we had thousands of requests to attend today's ceremony. Your generosity, love, and support are evident here today for our Navy for this ship, named for the great city of Santa Barbara, and for the incredible men and women who serve aboard this vessel. Hailing from Valdosta, a small Air Force town in South Georgia, it's hard to believe I'm standing here today in command, taking part in the time-honored tradition of commissioning a Navy warship. I'm excited that my dad, Daryl, and two of my brothers, Kevin and Steven, were able to fly out for the event today. Growing up, I learned from my dad and from my late mother, Jan, to work hard, study hard, and put forth the effort needed to succeed. That advice worked as a kid in school. It worked to get me here in my career. And I used similar guiding principles in my command philosophy for this crew. When I first arrived, I challenged this combined blue and gold crew 
to come together as a team to continually assess our training and material shortfalls and to hold ourselves and our industry counterparts accountable to correcting those shortfalls and to reach success. And they have in a grand way. Upon taking delivery of this ship in July of 2022, I told our industry team at Austell USA and this crew that we would breathe life into the hull and bring her alive. The team came together on day one of Move Aboard and started that journey by certifying early in every training event. We overcame obstacles during sail around through training, perseverance, and innovation. We identified problems with equipment and training and corrected them, returning to our families more seasoned and experienced on this new ship. The crew exemplified our ship's motto, showing resilience in the face of those obstacles and becoming more determined with every passing moment to show what they and this ship could accomplish. As we come towards our ceremony's conclusion here today, I must recognize the Navy families who allow us to successfully defend you while they show their own resilience and determination at home in our absence. My wife, Ansley, and three of our children, Aiden, Zachary, and Amelia, join me here today while our oldest, Gabrielle, watches with friends online away at college. I'm happy so many of our families were able to come today to observe this time-honored tradition with their sailors front and center. We thank you for your service at home to allow our service here. Admiral Paparo, Commodore Crawford, I and the crew of USS Santa Barbara stand ready to answer all bells. We look forward to meeting every order with resiliency and determination towards victory at sea from the littorals. Thank you all. Santa Barbara, attention. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Tracy will deliver the benediction. Let us pray. Holy One, we commend this ship, the USS Santa Barbara, to your care and keeping as she takes her place in the United States Navy. May this ship be a respected adversary in conflict, an effective deterrent to war, and a welcome means of compassionate assistance to those in need. Grant the Santa Barbara's leadership and crew the resilience and determination to live into the motto blazoned on their ship's brow. In each unknown that lies ahead, watch over these sailors and return them safely to their families. Embolden them with courage and tenacity to meet the challenges that will be placed before them. We ask you to bless Commander Sparks as he brings his insight and skill to command the USS Santa Barbara. We are grateful today for the steadfastness of his family and friends, all of whom have championed him during each chapter of his life, leadership, and naval career. Watch over Commander Sparks as he takes this next step on the path you've laid before him in commanding this warship and crew. Gracious God, in looking out on all who sail the USS Santa Barbara, past, present, and future, bless us to remember the legacy that now lives and breathes in this ship. Embolden us with the words of the patron saint of Santa Barbara, who proclaimed, courage is stronger than the forces of hurricanes and the power of lightning. So may faith be on your side, so that when we all, like you, face storms, wars, trials, and tribulations, we will do so with the same fortitude with which you faced yours. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Thank you, Chaplain Tracy.